Praise the Lord. Thank God we can come today and hear God's word. Amen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord. We're saved. We're delivered all through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You healed us. You redeemed us. You prospered us. You've given us divine protection. We thank the Lord for all of our new covenant benefits and blessings through Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's open our Bibles here to the book of Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter 11. This is when Jesus spoke this fig tree and cursed it the wither away. So we'll pick up what happened here afterwards in verse 22. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever is saying this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall but say it. Now let's go over here to Romans, please. We're here to Romans chapter 10. And we'll start here in, um, we'll start here in verse 6. <clears throat> But the righteous which of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in the heart, who shall ascend to heaven, that is bring Christ down from above? Or who shall ascend the deep, that is bring up Christ again today? But what saith it? The word. Think about this. The righteous person, to live by faith, they speak God's word. Now once a person receives Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they become the righteous of God in Christ. And Jesus is teaching us here, there in Mark chapter 11, and also in Matthew, in the book of Luke, that we have authority. Like he said in Luke chapter 17, verse 6, um, if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed, you might say in the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted seed, and it shall obey you. Now, for, in order for things to obey us that comes against us, we need to speak to them. And Jesus is teaching us here to do this. So we read here in Romans chapter 10, talking about us that's received Christ, that we're the righteous of God in Christ, and righteousness which of faith speaketh. We, got, we became righteous through faith. We're saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves to give to God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And God gave us his word so we could at least know what his will is for our life. So we just didn't live in this life kind of bumping around, not knowing what God wants to do. No, just knowing what Jesus did for us, what he promised in his word, then we can activate that covenant that God gave us, the new covenant, and begin to receive the benefits and blessings that belong to us and actually use the authority that God gave us so we can live in divine protection. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what we found out here is that faith speaks, and it speaks God's word. Now, I didn't know what to say when I got saved. I mean, if I know, you know, I heard a minister talk about if you're going to please God, you got to live by faith, and faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So what do I say about the situations? Well, this answered it in this Romans 10, verse 6 and verse 8. Faith speaketh. Then verse 8 said, the word. So this got my answer. Faith speaketh the word. So if I'm going to live by faith, then i got to speak God's word. And that's the way I release my faith that I have in God, is by speaking in Jesus' name today. Now, Jesus showed us here about this fig tree. He spoke to it, it obeyed him. And then also in Mark chapter 4, when they woke up, Jesus said, Carest thou not to be perished? He spoke to the wind, spoke to the waves, and they obeyed him. We see in Old Testament in Joshua chapter 10, Joshua, Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon, and it obeyed him. And then we read there in in 1 Samuel chapter 17, David spoke to Goliath and told Goliath what he was going to do to him. And it happened. Now, what was David doing? He was using his covenant. He was exercising his authority and benefits he had in that old covenant. And so was Joshua. Now, Jesus showed us here that we could have what we say. And we, actually, we do have what we say. We are born in that way. Because Romans there in chapter 10, verse 9 10 says, That if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God is raised dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart... Man believe the righteous, the mouth confession means salvation. So that's how we come into the kingdom of God or into God's family, by, by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. Now we're taught in God's word to hold fast our profession in Hebrews chapter 9. Now how do we do that in Hebrews chapter 4? How do we do that? Why well, holding fast to our profession of faith. Our, conf our profession is our confession. And we're to hold fast to that. That's one way we stand and have done Donald stand like Ephesians 6 says to do. And it's important for you and I that we always say what the Word says about us. When faced with challenges, decree and declare what God's Word says. And Jesus is teaching us here. See, to speak to mountains. Mountains are problems. Like he spoke to the storm and spoke to the waves. In Mark chapter 4, beginning verse 35 through 41. And he reprimanded his disciples because they did. He'd already said, before he went, went to high power ship sleep on a pillow, he'd already said, let us pass over another side. And he went to high power ship sleep on a pillow. Well, this storm rose. And started filling boat, boat with water. And they got panicky. And they woke up Jesus and said, Carest thou not we perish? And Jesus rose and said to the storm and said to the waves, Peace be still. Rebuked it and said, Peace be still. And it obeyed him. And then reprimanded his disciples because they did. 
they had God's word because he said, let us pass over the side. That meant protected, successful. And we did, we're to speak the word, decree and declare the end results that we desire. Again, like Jesus said there in Luke 17, verse 6, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say in the sick mind tree, be thou plucked up by the roots and be thou cast seed and it should obey you. Think about this. It will obey you. Well, these things in life are to obey us. We're not an authority over people, you know, telling them and using our authority over them. But we are using authority over circumstances. And we should. Demons, demons devils, fear, worry, doubt, unbelief, stress, anxiety, ill feelings, depression, oppression that comes to us. Then we need to resist it. We're going to do that by speaking words out of our mouth. We're going to do that by decreeing and declaring what God's word says about us. If it's healing, we use healing scriptures. Finances, use financial scriptures. And we can continually decree and declare, this is what God's word says. That's how we hold fast to our profession of faith. That's how we, having done all stand, stand there for. I mean, there's all kinds of challenges in life. And God made us uh, world overcomers. This is the victory overcome the world, even our faith in 1 John 5, verse 4 and 5. He made, made us more than conquerors, right? In Romans chapter 8, verse 37. He said we can do all things through Christ in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. He promised that greater is he that is in you in his world in 1 John 4, 4. He redeemed us from the curse of sickness, disease, and poverty, and lack, and sin in Galatians 3, 13. Now, these are benefits that belong to us that we need to become familiar with and exercise our authority in Jesus' name. It's kind of easy just to begin to cope with a problem that we haven't really talked to, we haven't spoken to, we haven't taken authority over it. And see, we're taught in God's word. Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, and Matthew 18, 18, that whatever we bind on earth should be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. We've been in authority. One translates, whatever you allow, heaven will allow. And see, that sums it up right there. What a person allows to happen will happen by not using their authority, by not using what God gave us, the name of Jesus. Promises from God's word are to be spoken out of our mouth. Now, we read there in Romans chapter 10, that faith speaketh in verse 6. And then verse 8 tells me what it speaks. It speaks God's word. Centurion said, just speak the word only, my servant be healed. Think about this. And this got to get Jesus' attention. He said, I've never seen so great faith, no, not in Israel. Now, how did this uh, centurion get his servant healed? What he said to Jesus, just speak the word only, my servant be healed. And Jesus said, you know, told him to go home, his servant's healed. Well, now, that amazed Jesus. Jesus marveled at this. I mean, Jesus marveled at people's unbelief. He marveled this man's faith. That's what we do. We, what we do, we speak the word, decree and declare, because God's word doesn't return void. Just knowing what God promised us is the first step. Because a lot of us were taken advantage of, you know, because we didn't know what belonged to us in Christ Jesus. And therefore, we accepted many things that we should have never accepted. We didn't resist it. We didn't know to, or we didn't know how to, or we didn't know it was even available. So we got taken advantage of. But once we begin to get insight in God's word and begin to realize we have something to say here, not to use our mouth is dangerous. We need to always engage our mouth that we speak to problems, situations. And you know, a lot of times we think, well, I know that. Well, okay, are we doing it? It's, it's being a doer of the word of God is going to bring the results. And not to take authority where something would try to come on us is, is you know, it's dangerous for us to do that. No, the first sign of anything that comes, when it comes to stealing, killing, and destroying, what we need to do as believers is take authority of it in Jesus' name. Speak to it. I resist this in Jesus' name. I don't accept this in Jesus' name. I deny to have this in Jesus' name. You know, we heard what the doctor said or what whoever said that brought up the report. Then did we speak to it afterwards? Did we say, no, I refuse this in Jesus' name? And we need to, you know, exercise our authority that God gave us because Jesus gave us this authority in his name. He said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Now Jesus, that's in John chapter 14, verse 12. Now Jesus showed us here, and his disciples, when he was on board that ship, how you need to take authority over things. And also Jesus illustrated how powerful words are. He spoke to the fig tree and said, no man eat fruit of here, thee here half forever. And they heard him say that. And when the next day when they went by, this fig tree dried up from the roots. Think about that. See, this is what gets our attention, realizing you know, a lot of the stuff I've been saying, I should never have said. It was negative. It was doubt. It was unbelief. And then we begin to be taught about speaking God's word. I want to encourage you. Take Mark eleven twenty three. 23. 
Use it every day of your life. Think about it. Ask yourself the question, because I do. Sometimes I, I didn't speak to the problem. I didn't speak to the situation. Wondered about it. Wonder why it happened. All that. And yet, I hadn't used my authority that God gave me. No, we need to. If we haven't, then get busy doing it. And take Mark eleven twenty three, And just always read it to yourself. Remind yourself that God gave us power over these situations to move mountains in Jesus' name. Really enjoyed being there today. I'm so glad you was able to watch. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mania. Keep speaking God's word. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.